Good morning, Kamau County. Colette Meese here. I just wanted to give you a little update on Commissioner's Court. Today's July 23rd, Thursday. And it was a pretty short court today. It only lasted about 30 minutes. Um, there was an award that happened today with Estella, that's my grandmother's name, Estella Delgado Farias. She was the recipient of the Frederick Fu Fruholz, Freeholz Junior Historic Preservation Award. It made me a little uncomfortable, a lot uncomfortable, let me say that. They presented her an award, but she was sitting in the back of the room. She wasn't asked to come up to receive it. And then they went and handed her the award while she was sitting down in the back which normally they take pictures in the front. Um, maybe, maybe I'm getting the procedure wrong. That's highly possible. And then the head of the historical commission came up and then talked about her while she's sitting in the back of the room. It was just really odd. It was really odd. Um, I've never seen that in all the times that I've been to commissioner's court. And You know, I don't want to make something that doesn't exist, but to me, in light of my work with persons of color and the history of, I, I don't know, it just didn't sit right with me. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, so she has done some really amazing stuff. Community Impact did this, Estella Delgado Farias, and I may be pronouncing her name last name wrong. Uh, she did some, has done some incredible work documenting the history of New Braunfels and Kamau County with um, the Westside Community Center, with obituaries. I mean, the list is really long. And um, so I'd just like to give her props. And it was a shame that she couldn't have had a picture taken with all the commissioners receiving the award. And then at least been acknowledged to come up in the front. It's... Um, Maybe that's my own stuff. Um, there was a donation made, which he did go to the front, by William Sneed um, to the sheriff's office. Um, that was always such a blessing um, with people getting donations from the sheriff's office. Uh, um, Jen Crown, Commissioner Crownover was like, was like very thank you, it's much needed. Um, there was no citizen comments. Um, I'll give you a little update on Paul Anthony, public information officer, um, talked in place of Cheryl Frazier. There is 1,831 cases right now. There's been the increase since 27 cases since yesterday. This is the smallest increase since June, June 19th. So that's a positive. There's a, a little under 10,000 tests that have been performed. There are 446 probables. There's 46 deaths and 770 people have recovered. We are in the second day of decline on positive rates. Um, however, we the hospitalizations are at 76 people and there's an increase of three from yesterday. Our positivity rate is 18.32%, which is astronomical. Um, Dr. Anil Mangla, in an interview a few days ago, said that is a disaster. Um, he said you really wanted it three to 6% and that that is a hot red zone. Um, so the city has been, the city and the county has been receiving calls from about reopening of schools um, from parents and teachers about concerns. So I suggest if parents, teachers, anybody, if you have concerns to reach out to your commissioners, to reach out to your city council. Um, I know it is a, a an issue um, or epidemiologist, you know, said that he didn't want to give an opinion on the reopening, but being that we are in a disaster area with the red zone, that it that it is a bit unthinkable. Um, 
So uh, the public health department said that they are open for immun immunizations for back to school. So to be patient with them because obviously they have a lot of phone calls and a lot on their plate. So please be patient with them and keep calling. They are uh, in the process of getting additional take call takers, um, especially for testing. So uh, hopefully by the end of the week, they'll have those. The phone number for testing for COVID is 830-221-1120. There were 88 tests performed on Tuesday. Um, the tests are performed on Tuesdays and Fridays, so just keep calling if you can't get through. Um, they wished Anil, Dr. Anil Mangla, um, Mangla, excuse me, um, well, well wishes that he is now the head of over 900 epidemiologists in DC right now. So. Props to him um, and all good things hopefully going his way um, with helping people there. Um, the hospitals are stressed. There have been 13 recent deaths with 300 cases um, in the hospital. You know, so um, that is something to just keep in mind for our healthcare workers and ambulance drivers and everybody that's involved on that chain that it is uh, a really stressful time um, so that's about it with the COVID um, there was approval to an estate and then with the jail there was a $27,000 change order that for an approval of an occupancy of hurting of holding facility at the jail they are pretty much coming, wrapping up the fruition at the end of that. Um, Commissioner Webb mentioned that they passed a smoke test um, and they're moving forward. So um, Jeff Kelly with the state, I've, ta I've talked about um, helping with the state with the nursing homes or long care facilities, which they are providing services to three different ones. He didn't, they didn't mention which ones with uh, 14,000 sur uh, mat surgical masks, 21,000 gloves, uh, 8,095 regular masks, eight gallons of disinfectant, and on and on. Um, so I'm not sure if he said that was every day or how often they're getting those supplies. So that is about it for Commissioner's Court. Um, mind you, it was really short. It, um, so if you have any questions for me, or if you wanna know what's going on, I, just get a hold of your commissioners, get a hold of the judge. Uh, with the school reopening, I think it's really important that people make their voice heard. It's a really important issue. It's it's uh, complicated um, and let's see it, just complicated. So wish you well, all good things. Hope you have a good day. Happy Thursday. Bye-bye.